Hi everyone and welcome to episode 15 of Teach Tech Play. I'm Eleni Karitsis and I'm tonight's host. Tonight we've got a jam-packed episode with some fantastic presenters from around the world who are going to be sharing some amazing tools with you all and show you different ways you can implement them into your classroom. But before we get started, we need to congratulate last month's winner. So Emily McLean um, won episode 14 with JS Timeline. So if you missed this episode and want to see what it was all about, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and not miss a second or miss an episode um, is better way of saying it. So make sure that you do subscribe to our YouTube channel to get all our videos and catch up on episodes you have missed. Another very exciting thing that we are launching this month is our Facebook page. So if you are on Facebook, you can now follow Teach Tech Play. So if you just go and search that, you will find um, Teach Tech Play right there um, that you can join, follow and keep up to date as well. So please make sure you do share that as well with everyone um, at your school and other fellow teachers. So tonight we have some fantastic presenters and I know that a couple of them have woken up extremely early which we do really appreciate. So they've got the coffee ready to go. Please make sure you do vote. So tonight's voting link is bit.ly forward slash TTP and that is capital TTP lowercase e 15 vote um, or you can simply go to our website which is teachtechplay.com. So please make sure you do vote. Voting is open till 8 p.m. on Friday but don't vote till you've seen everybody, every one of our presenters. So I think we've got a great lineup tonight and we're all looking forward to seeing what we're, everyone's got to share. Now one other thing, we are waiting for one of our presenters so hopefully he will join us, Lee will join us very soon. Um, but we might get started with introductions. So Nikki, do you want to introduce and tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from? Sure. My name is Nikki Sattler is Nikki and I'm Sattler, the director, I'm director, 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 excuse me, director, director of technology, of technology here in Dayton, Ohio. Dayton, Ohio. Um, I'm a um, Google trainer and a Google Ads admin. admin. So uh, I've been working with Google for about six years now, and I'm really excited to share what I've, <coughs> excuse me, what I've learned and some neat tools that will help teachers in the classroom. Wonderful. Thank you, Nikki. Nathan, you're only just down the road from me, so do you want to share a little bit about yourself? And this is your second time on Teach Tech Play, which we are very privileged to have you join us again. Thank you. Yes, um, I'm obviously teaching at Kerry Grammar um, and that will only be until the end of this term. Those online that don't know this will be announced tomorrow at my work so please don't put on social media yet. Um, I've been working with Apple technology for about five years now and Kerry is a one-to-one -one iPad school. Um, so my passion is within the iPad world and one-to-one -one learning. Um, and I've got my own uh, consultancy uh, network starting next year hopefully. So that's about me. Thank you, Nathan, and very exciting times ahead for you. And lucky last, we've got Donnie. Do you want to share a little bit about yourself? Sure. My name is Donnie Piercy. I work in a hybrid role for a school district right here in Kentucky. I work as a fifth grade teacher, but I'm also the district's technology integration specialist. I'm also a Google certified inno innovator and Google certified trainer as well. Beautiful, thank you. And it is really exciting to have all of you here and hopefully Lee will join us soon. I know I got an email from him earlier today and he was extremely excited. So hopefully he's just getting his stuff ready and will join us very shortly. Now each presenter has four minutes to share a tool that they use in their classroom to support learning and teaching. So um, I will start the timer once you're ready. So just let me know and I'll give you a one minute warning. So Nikki, you are up first. All right, let me share my screen here. All right, I think I'm ready. Beautiful, I'll start the timer. Okay, so one of the things that I find to be really helpful uh, when I do my trainings and for teachers is the ability to use uh, screenshots and uh, screen capture uh, tools when they work on their presentations. 
So I'm going to demo two tools today. One is Nimbus Screenshot and the other one is Snagit. They are both Chrome extensions uh, and they're really easy to use. So let's go ahead and demo uh, Nimbus Screenshot first. Nikki, I think we might have just lost you. Nikki, are you there? Always love going live. We um, occasionally do lose and drop out. So hopefully we can get Nikki back soon. No, not quite yet. Okay, we might move on and I'll put it in the, I'll send her a little message and let her know. Um, it's always fun when you go live. Things never work. We were talking about this just before the show and said that sometimes technology does um, not quite favour us in what we do. So hopefully we can get Nikki back in a second. But while we're waiting for her to come back, Nathan, did you want to get started? Is he frozen too? Donny, can I you hear me? Know. Well, this is interesting. <laughs> Yeah, um. Nick, Nikki, are you there? <laughs> oh no, my internet went out. Hold on. <coughs> we might have oh. you again. It was just Donnie and I then for a second. Nathan's frozen and you were frozen as well. It's going to be the best episode ever right here. I know. We're, we're on a firing start here. <laughs> <laughs> There's a terrible oh, Nikki, moment in this, I swear. I know. We love technology, don't we? <laughs> So, Nikki, when you're ready, I'll start the timer again. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. And we've got Dr. Okay, Zoom. so I remember I told you my internet was going out, and so it just decided to go out on me. <laughs> That's all right. We can start again if you want, if you just want to go back to the start. You were okay. just about to click, but we'll just start from the start because you were just at the beginning. <clears throat> okay. Well, let me go back here. Uh, again, I'm going to demo Nimbus Screenshots. So um, I was talking about how I wanted to add pictures to my presentations. So here's where I've captured one off of Sandra Boyton's website. And you can see here when I selected it, I either have the option to save it, cancel, or edit it. Uh, for this one, I've just saved it and added it to my presentation. If I come over here and I want to add something from Dr. Seuss, I can go to this Dr. Seuss website and maybe I want to get more than just his picture. I can click here and I've got different options so I'm going to do selected and scroll this time and I can take my cursor and maybe I want to choose just this first paragraph and if I didn't get it all I can move it over get what I need um, save it again this time it's going to ask me to save it as a file type so I can call it Dr. Seuss and save. And the nice thing is, is I can just drag it in here and I've got it. And again, I can resize it if I need to. Um, one of the other nice things about this is it also gives me the ability to edit. So um, again, this is another one of my favorite authors. And what I'm going to do for this one is I'm not only going to select part of it, but I can also edit and annotate it. So if I click on this uh, pencil here, it will take me into the extension and I can maybe, oh, I don't know, draw, you know, underline where it says three little pigs. I could circle something here. I could add text beneath it. Maybe say best story ever. And then after that, we can center it a little better. Again, then I can say I'm done. I can save the image. Come back to my presentation and add it there and my annotations will be there as well. So that's a really cool tool um, that I've found for when I do trainings. Um, another tool that I like <clears throat> is Snagit, and I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with Snagit. 
Um, you can not only use it for doing uh, screen captures, but you can also use it for animated GIFs. And this is where I really think this comes in handy. Uh, when I do my training videos, a lot of times um, I want to demonstrate something, but I can't always do it live because I post these on my website. So if I wanted to show somebody how to create a calendar event... One minute. Okay, I could create a animated GIF here by going to the Snagit, and we're going to go to Screen. I'm going to create something. Demo. Put in my time, and I'm going to hit Stop. At this point, Snagit's going to open, and because it's under 20 seconds, it will create an animated GIF for me. As soon as this is done, it takes just a little bit to process. If I click that and go to animated GIF, it's going to cook as it says. And then it's done. I'm going to download it, go back here, and add it. And now you can see it's actually doing the animated GIF and kind of demoing how to do something when I can't be there to show somebody how to do it. So those are my handy dandy tools that I use almost on a daily basis. So hopefully you'll find that as helpful uh, for you as it does as it is for me. Beautiful, thank you, Nikki. And I know that um, I have used some of those tools, and they are extremely handy, and especially in um, capturing those images. And it's so easy for students to have them in their extensions. And if you are using Chromebooks like you are tonight, you can actually through your admin console send out. Um, specific extensions straight out to students so that might be one that a lot of teachers out there are interested in so they could contact their techs to add that to there and snag it. I know um, GIFs are something that continue to amaze me and I didn't actually realize that you could do it so simply through snag it so that's something that you've actually taught me tonight so I really appreciate that. Did any of our other presenters have any questions or comments for Nikki? Yeah, what was that when you click? Is it Nimbus? Is that what the first extension was? What was that? Is yes. that something over there that said Android version? What was that? Have you ever I've clicked not that? I've not played with that. Um, I'm a, I, I really shouldn't say I'm assuming because you know what happens when you assume sometimes. No, what? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens when you do that. If I click on Android version, oh, it's actually going to take me to the Google Play Store. Where it looks oh, like you okay. can probably download it for an Android. So maybe you could do it on oh, you an could Android. like push it out and install it on your Android device. That's neat. Yeah. Hmm. Grabbing that one in three, two. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's the thing I think um, we love about Teach Tech Play. There are so many tools out there, and it's not until we pull all the educators in and share one or two things that we all learn something. And there's so much out there that um, it's just about finding the tool that works for you. So in saying that, we've got Nathan up next. And Nathan, you'll be sharing Adobe Voice with us. And I know I've had a bit of a play with Adobe Voice, and it is quite exciting. So let me know when you're ready, and I'll start the timer. Go for it. All righty, off you go. So Adobe Voice, um, I'm a big fan. <coughs> it's an Android and an um, and an Apple app. Um, it's iPad based. Um, I'm not too sure if it's available on a Mac or a Google Chromebook, um, but it is a fantastic app. Something that um, allows you to go through. So what I've got for you, I'm not going to demo how to use it. I've got screenshots I've taken from my iPad. Um, so that's the logo. And obviously, if you do a search for Adobe Voice. All you need to do is get a free account, um, and this free account is quite easy to create. Uh, the only challenge I found was the password had to be a mixture of capital letters and, and a variety of different characters, and I think sometimes that's a bit of a challenge when you've got so many passwords, but we got past it, and students in my class use this, and they use this to do a variety of presentations. So I'll go through some screenshots. When you open it up, you get to create a story, and I've written the title there, Book Report. So a lot of my students have done a, um, uh, an Adobe Voice animation on a book report. So a bit of background about Adobe Voice. It looks at creating a slideshows um, and you put your voice over the top of it, but you get to select various icons and images to add to each slide. 
and there's a background music built in that you can change, but it's a, it's a default background music that you can add to different themes. So when you go to it, you put the title and you press next, and then you get a variety of choices of themes to look at. So you can send an invitation, and for example, I create an invitation for my wife's birthday, which is this weekend, and I basically got Adobe Voice, created the animation, got my girls to do a slide each, and invite people and on that slide, on each slide had the destination and where the party was and what to do. So there's a whole heap of themes and all you do is scroll through those themes and make a choice and you pick one. So I'm going to make up my own. And then this is the screen you'll get. Up the top there's the three tabs, layout, themes, music, and that's pretty straightforward. When you press layout, it changes the layout of the background, which is color themes. So this is what it looks like. The idea is down the bottom you can see there's all different slides. So each slide will talk you through what has to happen. What you do is you put your icons and images in the middle or text and then you hold that orange microphone, you keep your finger on it and you record your voice. So I get my students to storyboard what they want to say uh, because planning is important. We don't want them to just go on and muck around with the app and then all of a sudden produce something that's not really of a success criteria we expect. So I'll go to the next slide. So there's some of the themes and across the top you just scroll across and you choose your theme. Um, I think I chose the next one will give you an idea. So when I chose a theme, I can then change the background. The background will change. I press that plus in the middle and I can choose an icon that are basically built-in icons within the app that they search for you. There's photos from the Adobe Creative Suite one or minute. you can ac thank you, access photos from your um, iPad. Text, I'm going to skim through. So there's the theme and the keyboard comes up. And there's the icons, a variety of icons within Adobe Voice to use. And they just add to the slide. And I hold my voice down and talk over the top. There's some photos that are built in. And they basically are built into the app. And they're all common uh, creative commons. So you don't get to write, you don't need to write down where they come from because it does it at the end. And there's my book report. And what I can do is I can share it. I can create a link, uh, make it public, which we don't do, but I'm just, I can switch that off. Um, the copy board gives you a public link and then that can be put into a QR code, therefore can be put onto your classroom wall um, for students to scan and read each other's reports. Or you can email it to yourself or email it to your teacher. So there's the email and it gives you the author, then it scans and it basically downloads. There's the email um, and that gives you the email link and the book reports there. That's Adobe Voice in a really quick example. Thank you, Nathan. And I know Adobe Voice is something that um, even in our year one classes at my school they use. Um, they use it through the teacher account um, and they record their learning and their understanding of different key concepts and, under, um, and then that is evidence that can be used for portfolios, reports um, and student-led conferences as well. So um, it can be used a whole range of ways, which is really exciting. Did anyone else have any questions for Nathan or anything to say if they've used the app? Nope. Nothing. You're off the hook, yeah. Nathan. That's easy. So, yeah, very easy. Now, next up is myself. And I am going to be looking at recording student um, data and more into recording student voice. So I'm just going to share my screen um, with you all. So, oh, actually, I don't need to share yet because I need to actually present to you and then share. So let me get my timer ready and then I'll get started. So my phone's locked and now it's not recognizing my finger. Technology is not my friend tonight, I've decided. Okay, so earlier episodes, I think it was episode three, I spoke about the power of QR codes in the classroom and this is something that I have created and I'd forgotten about it in moving schools this year. So what it is is a QR cube and on this QR cube um, there are different QR codes and I've got five of these cubes. If you'd like the template to these and you can print them off and use them in your own classroom, they're up on my blog. Now what these um, QR codes have is 
different um, sentence starters to reflect on a lesson. So what I was doing with my class, which I haven't really done this year, which I came across it again through my resources and forgot I even had it, was um, students would scan it and then they would have their sentence prompt their sentence starter that then they would go and write about what they learned. So one of them that I scanned just before said, how do you feel now and why? So in regards to a lesson that you've taught, I'm getting them to write that in their books. That's how I was recording it or I would get them to discuss it with a partner. But this was all great and really exciting, but I found that being a teacher, I didn't actually get to see what my students were saying or hearing what they were doing. So I actually thought of another way and I've been using Google Forms a lot this year so I'll just share my screen with you all now. And what I am planning on doing this term is creating an exit ticket where my students will put in their name, the date and the subject that it's related to. So whether we've just had a reading block, a writing block or maths or um, a specific um, unit of inquiry, they will make that specific for me and they will either write the question out using a Google form, but the thing I really like is their discussion, the way they can articulate what they're doing. And I came across this website called, and now I'm going to test them, Vocaroo, which you can actually record yourself. So you can click on the click record and what it does is it connects, it may not re allow I love it when you do it. So now it is recording my voice and it gives you 30 seconds. So it makes the students articulate what they're saying. Once that's done, you can re-listen to your recording. If you're happy with it, you click here to save. And what it then does is give you the link. So then you can copy that link and enter that into your um, um, now I've had a mental blank, into your Google Form and send that and submit that. So as a teacher, let me just quickly select a date, um, and submit that. So as a teacher then, I can have a look at my student responses once it comes through, and then I can click on that link and hear what my students have said. So that is just one way that you can actually keep data and track what students are saying and record and keep that evidence and anecdotal notes and that value of their actual voice in the classroom. I think as teachers, you know, we hear and we see it all, but when it comes to reporting, we don't actually have those resources. If you are on an iPad, you can simply get your students to record their voice and then upload that to um, Google Drive and grab the link from there. So then that's another way that you can see it as well. And that way then I've got one whole spreadsheet I can articulate into different dates. I can really easily sort out um, reading, writing, um, all the different subject domains and keep track of my student voice and make that connection with reflecting on learning and where to take it next and develop that understanding of what my students actually know. So that's me done with 17 seconds to spare. So did anyone have any questions or any comments on that? Have you ever tried that Vocaroo on, on an iPad? Doesn't work on an iPad. There was an app called Crocket, but um, the app developers haven't updated it since April and it doesn't work anymore. So that was a little bit shattering. It did give you the link directly as well. So if anyone knows Crocket app developers, tell them to fix it because it's really handy. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it doesn't technically work. I tried it earlier on my iPad and it doesn't work, unfortunately. But Let you me, can do the work around. Do you have one for me, Nathan? Oh, oh, oh. No, no, I'm a no, massive no, fan of Yeah. Yep. Uh, what? The sustainability behind QR codes and getting links out of Google Drive is just fantastic. Students then put them onto Pic Collage and they become video tutorials like Adobe Voice or any Puppet Pals or iMovie, whichever. So I've just put two links there. I use qrstuff.com, so do the students. And the one I haven't used for a long time is qrvoice.net. And that records oh. their voice and it goes into a QR code and they send that to you with an email. Beautiful, thank you. And I'm sure they can even put that um, instead of in an email, they can copy that link and put it into the Google form as well. So um, yeah. thank you for sharing. I knew you would have a response to me. I should have asked you before the show. But um, no, thank you right. for yep. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, just the next QR codes are great. I have a they question are. about that cube. 
Um, so yeah. Do you like roll? So after you read a story, do you like roll it and then the students scan it, or do you scan it, or how does how does that? So like... I mix it up all the time. So whether it's at an end of a lesson and I want to just get a bit of reflection and understanding of what my students have learned. So all of the QR codes are different on mm. each of the five cubes. They have questions like today I learned I need help with um, today I enjoyed two stars and a wish. Um, this was made very clear to me today. So a whole range of different sentence starters. So what I do is sometimes I will roll it as a whole class and I'll say, okay, everybody, today we're going to answer this one. Or I might have the students in small groups and I'll get them to roll it and then they'll each reflect on the same one. Or it can just go around at different times. Each student rolls, scans, and then they each answer a different question. So there are a whole range of different ways you can actually use the one cube. That'd be great for like a uh, journal entry starter too for kids that have yeah. uh, problems with writing prompts. That'd be a great idea for that as well. Yeah, and I have used it in uh, Make Cubes like this as well, and I just love it because they don't actually know what the prompt is of what they've got to reflect. A lot of the time, they're used to the two stars and a wish, or today I have learnt where it really mixes it up and creates that bit of excitement. Like, what what question am I going to get, and gets them to think outside the box a little funny box and think outside the box. So exciting, but I think that's enough of me. So we might move on to Donnie, you're next. And I uh -huh. don't know if Lee's around, so hopefully he does pop in before the end. And Donnie, you are sharing with us, let's make a map quickly. And so I'm excited. You're a bit of a map guru, so let me know uh, when you're ready. I am I'll ready. See. Can I check first? Can you see my screen? Definitely can see your screen. Okay, great. So um, I know that last month you shared about MyMaps, which if you don't know what MyMaps is, it's this awesome tool. They actually can live and be created within Google Drive. You can also go to google.com slash MyMaps and pull it up there. But it's this awesome collaborative map feature. Students can make and create their own maps. They can collaborate with up to 50 other classmates, etc. It's awesome. But the problem is if you've got massive amounts of data points, maybe you're tracking things like all the capitals in the United States or where maybe um, where certain events happen down in Australia, you're going to have to click that add marker button and do it multiple, multiple times. Where if you've got two, three hundred data points, that could take you a while. So here's a nice little pro tip. The thing about these different layers in my maps over here is they actually all come from what's called a data table. So every time you drop a place mark on a map, you now have like a name, description, etc. So because this comes from a data table, let me go ahead and make a new map here real quick. I'll just do it from Drive. So I'll just go to drive.google.com. And once I go in there, I'm going to go ahead and make click New. Go down to More. Come on, go to My Maps. And then once I do that, do 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 do. Once I do that, I can do what's called import a data layer, layer right here. And the nice part is I've made a spreadsheet earlier. So here's like every capital in the world. Here's every country in the world. And I can actually use the data in this Google Sheet right here, right, to add literally, how many points is that? About 260 points to my map in a second. So I can go here. Here's my layer. Click import. Then I can go to my drive. And then... Let's see, here's my World Capitals one. I can press select, and then it's going to go in, and it's going to fetch the document, and it wants to know, well, which columns do I want to use to position my place marks, capital and country city, and then what do I want to title my place markers, have a capital city. I press finish, and then give it about 10 seconds. It's going to basically do a Google search on the map for everything that I told it to, and then in a second, wait for it, wait for it, boom, there you go. So now you have a map that you can click through that you've got all these data points. So I started to think about that and I realized, well that means that since a Google form fills in a spreadsheet, that means that you could in theory ask a question and start to collect some data points from your class. I sent, I created this form earlier. For example, I said what's your name, what country, what state province, what state you live in, Twitter handle. And then I can use the data on here to make a map of any type of information I want. The only thing is, my maps, when you import these data layers, um, they can't have any type of punctuation. So when you ask a question, you kind of got to tweak it. So you can't have any question marks. So I can change this from what's your name. I can change that to 
name, what country we can do country, what state, we'll do state, and then here we'll do city, and then here we'll do Twitter. One so minute. I'm just going to go, I'm going to make a new map, let me jump down here. Do to do. Let me go in here. Then I can click on import. I'm going to go to Google Drive again. I'm go and find that file. There it is, favorite spot right there. Press select. Come on. Then what do I want to use to position? That would be country, state, and city. Continue. And then let's do it by name. Finish. And three, two, one. Wait. Boom, just made a map from the form, and I'm done. <laughs> did I, how much time did I have left? Was I close? Ten seconds. Woof. All right, made it. Well done. <laughs> Love it. Now, now, that's really cool. Donnie, I was just thinking a little bit of an idea. You know how you went in and changed the um, what is your name? You could even just have name and then in your Google form have the... Um, description underneath have the question underneath so then when it puts it into your spreadsheet you don't actually have to change that. Yeah, that I tried it? that before but like when I do like that with my students, I don't know, I, I just like to be very specific and also yeah. I, you know, when you're tweeting out a form for example, if you just put name, city, country, I don't know. I, I just wanted to make sure they went over that it can't have any punctuation in it because sometimes yeah. when people try to upload it, they get an error message that, you know, it puts all the punctuation marks they can't have and it kind of looks like an expletive. So <laughs> just kind of wanted to clear up, you know, if you get that, what the mistake was that you need to go fix. Yes, but it's very cool. And I know um, we're currently, tomorrow when my students come back, we're looking at, where um, where we are in place and time, so mm -hmm. it will fit really nice. And we're doing um, global um, migration and um, looking at different places in the world. So that will be a perfect thing. We can survey our students, see where they're from, and do it in a couple of clicks, which is really really handy. So thank you. Did any of our other presenters have anything they'd like to say? That was awesome. Loved it. Yeah, that was great. Exactly yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, if, uh, we can. Anytime you can get data, um, you know, like you guys shared earlier, it's just, you know, what do you want to do with it? You know, I like to visualize it because it's one thing whether you're like using conditional formatting on the spreadsheet or maybe you color it based on responses or if it's location, being able to visualize it. It's just, I mean, as educators, we just got to kind of think about, well, what do we want to do with this, right? And I think that's a really big thing, sorry Nathan, um, especially when we've got a lot of visual learners and um, they need to actually see and they don't know where a lot of places are in the world and that just quickly does it with a couple of clicks and nails it and gets them to see. Just that migration stuff which we did last term so I'm yeah, gutted I didn't see that until now. Um, so good luck with your unit. Thanks. It will, now I've got that and I know how it all works. I can do it, use it too now. Yeah. So And you'll, you'll tweet it everywhere, claim it's yours. No, I won't. I'll, I'll save you a thanks to Donnie. Nikki, did no, you have anything great. to say? Yeah. Um, coming up on January 28th is EdCamp Global. Um, I participated in the first one back on July 31st, August 1st, and it was really awesome. Um, it's learning that it was on globally. It's a 24-hour event. Um, there were participants from all over the world, um, and it takes place uh, both in Twitter chats, Google Hangouts, uh, and so on. So it's a really great opportunity to meet people all over the world, expand your PLN, and also learn more uh, about using different tools and get ideas for your classroom. So I really encourage people to take a look at this, sign up for it, become a presenter, attend. Uh, it's a really great opportunity to get some uh, neat ideas from people all over. Beautiful. Thank you, Nikki. And I know, Donnie, you've got some things coming up as well. Yeah, so in a couple of weeks, I'll be presenting at the Marin uh, County GAF Summit. A few weeks after that, I'll be in Kamloops, British Columbia, which I've never been to before, so I'm kind of excited about that, talking to another um, EdTech Team GAF Summit there. And then in February, I'll be at METC, which is in just outside of St. Louis, I think, talking about um, different ways that elementary educators can, or K, I don't know what year, K, well, I don't know how would you guys call it down there, year one through six is... 
Yeah, pr oh, prep or foundation now we call it. So, yeah, we understand K-12. Yeah. We understand K what you're talking K six, about. K-6, well, elementary in particular, can use different um, uh, pieces of ed tech with their students. Beautiful. Nathan, did you have anything coming up or you did share some news at the start? You're muted at the moment, Nathan. Um, not really, but I know that um, Schoolology, which um, Comp now are pushing, um, is a big new learning management system. There's a few breakfasts happening where they're promoting that learning management system across uh, Australia. Um, I'm not too sure. It's huge around the uh, the world. I'm not too sure if uh, Donnie and Nikki, are you aware of it? Yeah, uh, school, Schoolology or Schoolology. I never know how to quite pronounce it. I've never heard somebody from the company say it, but it's pretty neat. Yeah, I thought was, my teachers use it. I had a look at that um, earlier in the year. My school was testing out a few different LMSs, so I know that was one that was being tested in um, to see whether we would go with that one. So that's exciting to know as well. Now, before we do end tonight's show, the most important thing is to vote for your favourite presenter. So this link is up now. Please make sure you do vote and um, pass on the video to any colleagues that may have missed it. Um, remember, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to see past shows and um, past presenters with a great range of tools out there. We've also, our next episode, episode 16, will actually air on Monday the 9th of November. We've got a long weekend here in Melbourne, and um, so we won't be able to air on the first Monday, but it will be on the second Monday. Um, occasionally some things do clash, unfortunately. And we've got two more episodes till the end of the year, so make sure you do tune in and vote for your favourite presenter, which is always exciting. And if you are on Facebook, we have got a Facebook page now as well, so make sure you do follow us to keep up to date there. Now, unfortunately, Lee hasn't joined us. I'm not sure what happened, but I'm sure that we will get him hopefully on next month's show um, I know that the time difference, we can see Donnie's enjoying his coffee today to keep awake. So we do appreciate our um, presenters from overseas joining us. But if you are interested in being part of Teach Tech Play or have someone who you think would be great for it, please let us know. You can get in contact with us on our website. There is a Google form there to contact us or um, Twitter or Google+, Plus, etc. So a huge thank you to all of our presenters. Um, I know that we do really appreciate you guys finding the time to come on our show. Without you, it would not be possible. So make sure you keep up to date and do vote for your favourite presenters and we'll see you on November the 9th. Thanks again, guys. Bye. Thanks, y'all.